Hello, I'm glad that you decided to watch this video. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about human rights and fundamental freedoms, or if you will, just basically fundamental rights and freedoms that are recognized here in Canada and in the United States of America. In this day and hour, what is transpiring all across our world, we need to wake up and realize that we do not have to be held in slavery or in servitude to the governing bodies, the government systems. We all possess rights and freedoms that are ours to operate under. However, the majority of us are not even aware of our rights and freedoms that are there for us to express or to stand under. Now, if you're living in Canada, you've been designated a Canadian citizen. And as a Canadian citizen, you have the right to vote. Would you agree? Come election time, you can go and exercise this right. You can go to the polling stations and you can decide what political party you want to vote for and make that decision, check off the party and cast your ballot. Well, let's go back for a second here. You have the right to vote, right? However, no one will come with a gun at election time. No uh, public officer will come with a gun drawn and say, you have to go to the polling station and you must cast a vote. You are under obligation. That is ridiculous. No one would ever do that. Why? Because you, as a Canadian citizen, has been granted a right, or as an American citizen, has been granted a right to vote. And being granted a right does not produce an obligation. So I just want to make that clear, and I want you to see that expression of law that comes out. A lot of people think that if we have a right, it produces an obligation, or if we have a right, that we have to exercise this right. Not at all. A right is something that we can choose to use or choose not to use, and that operation of law comes clearly out with what we are given as a citizen, the right to vote. Now I want you to keep in mind of that sentence, the right to. We're going to look on more about our fundamental rights and freedoms. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 21. Everyone has the right to take part in the government of his country directly or through freely chosen representatives. The International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 25. Every citizen shall have the right and opportunity without any of the distinctions mentioned in Article 2 and without unreasonable restrictions b. to vote and be elected at genuine periodic elections which shall be universal and equal suffrage and shall be held by secret ballot guaranteeing the free expression of the will of the electors. Everyone has a right but no obligation. These rights are here for you to exercise if you decide to. They are rights for you not binding obligations. You have a right to vote and partake of the government but no obligation. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights Article 6 Everyone has the right to recognition everywhere as a person before the law. The International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 16. Everyone shall have the right to recognition everywhere as a person before the law. Everyone shall have the right, a human being shall have the right, to enter into, to take recognition as a person before the law. You can play the role of the legal person, the juridical personality. You have a choice, and it is up to you to use this choice either way. Here in Canada, this person is a subject and servant and is controlled by many enactments. You see, from the beginning, this legal person, this juridical personality that you have the right to enter into recognition of or as has been rendered a subject and a servant, and as I said, is controlled by very many enactments and laws. Now look at the Canadian Citizenship Act. It says that, I swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, her heirs and successors, and that I will faithfully observe the laws of Canada and fulfill my duties as a Canadian citizen. You see, by this uh, citizenship oath, by this affirmation, you have said that I will faithfully observe the laws of Canada and fulfill my duties as that Canadian citizen. This oath has placed you in servitude. It has placed you in servitude to the laws of the land and has placed you in servitude to Her Majesty to bear her true allegiance. This is what it's declaring. However, you have a right, and that right affords you not to enter into recognition as that legal person, as that person who's being held in servitude, in allegiance, who must obey the laws of Canada. What you are seeing is a basic fundamental expression of our fundamental human rights and freedoms. You see, we as everyone, we have the right we have the right to enter into recognition as a person before law, if we so choose. Just like that Canadian citizen has the right to vote. That right doesn't produce an obligation. Well, here, in international law, 
we have the right to enter in to that recognition as Canadian citizen, that subject or servant. However, we as human beings can express the opposite right to that, which is we can refuse, we do not have to render ourselves to take that role, to play that, if you will, character or subject in law. We can stand with our fundamental human rights and freedoms, and one of those freedoms, as you saw, is that you, as a human being, have the right, no obligation, to enter in to that juridical personality. The following definitions were taken out of legal dictionaries. Class, a group of people, things, qualities, or activities that have common characteristics or attributes. A subject, one who owes allegiance to a sovereign and is governed by that sovereign's laws. This is exactly what we just read in the Canadian Citizenship Act. It stated that we pledged allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen and that we promised to be governed or to follow her laws. Now, in legal dictionary, a citizen means a person who either by birth or naturalization is a member of a political community owing allegiance to the community and being entitled to enjoy all its civil rights and protections. Now, when you look into the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, you're going to find in Article 8. Now, when you look into the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights or the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, specifically in Article 8, in this covenant, it says, No one shall be held in servitude. So there, no one shall be held in servitude. Again, what we are seeing here is the fact that we, as men and women, have been rendered that legal person, that juridical personality, who owes allegiance to a sovereign and has to follow those, that sovereign's laws. However, it's very clear, one of our freedoms that are recognized in international law, and therefore in domestic law, is the fact that no one, no human being, no man, no woman, can be held in servitude. For you to force a human being to take the oath of citizenship, to bind themselves up as a subject and servant, and pledge allegiance to Her Majesty, removes our fundamental rights as human beings not to have to take recognition into that person and not to be held in servitude to somebody. We are not slaves, we are free human beings that live here on this territory that you have termed or designated Canada. I am not to be rendered a subject or servant, I am not to be placed in servitude, it is my God-given right, whatever God you believe in, that I do not have to bow my knee down and place myself under your subjection or under your, your authority. I have the right to be free, and international law allows me to express that right. However, there are some in public offices in Canada that feel that they have the right to rise up above a fellow human being, to rise up above a fellow man and woman, and to declare that you are my servant. You are in bondage to me, and therefore you must follow the laws of Canada. Is it just ignorance that you are unaware of what is transpiring in the law, or do you like to be criminal? Or do you like to be evil? Do you like to manifest this over human beings, this control mechanism to hurt us and to damage us? We have our rights and freedoms. Canada is bound by domestic law. Canada is bound by international law to allow us as individuals to, pr to promote and to express our fundamental rights and freedoms. I'm not bowing my knee to Her Majesty. The International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 2.2. Where not, already provided for by existing legislative or other measures, each state party to the present covenant undertakes to take the necessary steps in accordance with its constitutional process and with the provisions of the present covenant to adopt such laws or other measures as may be necessary to give the effects to the rights recognized in the present covenant. Obligation, a binding contractual obligation placed upon Canada to allow us the controlling medium were the international covenants. Rights and freedoms that were expressed in these covenants, they bind Canada. These rights must be brought forth through the constitutional process. The obligation upon Canada is a legal binding obligation. The Constitution Act of 1982, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, was the fulfillment of this international obligation to express our fundamental human rights and freedoms here in domestic law. In 1867, there was a constitution that was made here in Canada. If you go and study it and read it, you're going to see this is where it granted the powers of Canada to form a government in, the, uh, in operating the way it is right now. If you look more specifically in Article 91 and 92 of this Constitution Act, this is where the federal government was relegated powers and where the provincial governments were regulated powers. However, in 1867, 
the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights were not in operation at that time. So there was no obligation upon Canada to respect the rights and freedoms that were contained in these international instruments. However, after 1967, it produced an obligation upon Canada that now, whatever rights and freedoms were enumerated in these covenants, Canada had to make a new Constitution Act, and that new Constitution Act would bring forth, would express the fundamental rights and, and, and freedoms that Canada was under obligation to express. And what happened? They did. In 1982, there was a new Constitution, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, that came into operation, that came into existence in Canada, and this Constitution Act is an expression of international law, is an expression of the obligations that Canada is under. So when we look at it, it starts as 1867, the first Constitution Act, where we were all rendered subjects, there was no human rights really available, no international binding law upon Canada, no contractual obligation upon Canada to respect us as men and women. Now from 1867 till 1967 it remained the same. In 1967 the Constitution, uh, the 1967 the International Covenants came into existence and placed a binding obligation upon Canada, boom, 1982 Constitution Act of Canada comes out. The International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 5. Nothing in the present covenant may be interpreted as implying for any state, group, or person any right to engage in any activity or perform any act aimed at the destruction of any of the rights and freedoms recognized herein or at their limitation to a greater extent than is provided for in the present covenant. Canada is under obligation to follow the International Covenants. The covenants are the control mechanism that governs domestic law and the power of the legislators to make these laws. Canada cannot limit human rights and freedoms unless it is in accordance with the covenant. Canada cannot just make up laws and regulations that go against your fundamental rights. There always has to be a provision, a measure in place that allows you to exercise those rights and freedoms. Local Government Act, Incorporation of Municipalities, on the recommendation of the minister under subsection 2, the lieutenant governor and council may, by letters patent, incorporate the residents of an area into a new municipality. When you look into the Criminal Code of Canada, municipality includes the corporation of a city, town, village, county, township, parish, or other territory or local division of a province, the inhabitants of which are incorporated. So you see the lieutenant governor and council incorporates us into the municipality and the Criminal Court of Canada says that the inhabitants are incorporated into the municipality. This incorporated being, this legal person, the subject and servant of Her Majesty. A human being has a right to choose to enter into recognition as a person. The Lieutenant Governor and Council is not allowing me or you to exercise this right and freedom. This office is making decisions and determinations about your rights and freedoms. It is through this operation of law that they are designating us legal persons, that incorporated being, the juridical personality, the artificial person. This operation of law is against international law and against human rights and fundamental freedoms. The Constitution Act of 1982, where the international covenants placed obligation upon Canada to respect our rights and freedoms. Article 52, the Constitution of Canada is the supreme law of Canada. And any law that is inconsistent with the provisions of the Constitution is, to the extent of the inconsistency, of no force or effect. The Charter, in Article 26, guarantees certain rights and freedoms, and it shall not be construed as denying the existence of any other rights or freedoms that exist in Canada. So it is very clear that the Constitution Act of Canada is the supreme law of Canada, and that this Charter the Constitution Act of Canada, 1982, Article 52. The Constitution of Canada is the supreme law of Canada. And any law that is inconsistent with the provisions of the Constitution is to the extent of the inconsistency of no force or effect. Now, Article 26 of the Constitution Act states that the guarantee in this charter of certain rights and freedoms shall not be construed as denying the existence of any other rights or freedoms that exist in Canada. The government is a corporate body for public right. They are trying to incorporate you into this body. You have the right and freedom of association and they cannot force you to be part of them. You have the right to play the role of juridical personality, the subject or servant. 
A right is something you must exercise, you must bring forth. The government's actions are against your fundamental rights, so you must exercise your right, not to be held in servitude. The Constitution Act of 1867. In each province, the legislator may exclusively make laws in relation to matters coming within the classes of subjects, next here and after enumerated, that is to say, the establishment and tenure of provincial provinces, municipal institutions in the province, the incorporation of companies with provincial objections or objects, sorry. The legislators of the province were given the rights to make law concerning municipal institutions and municipal corporations. The legislators were under obligation to respect the rights and freedoms found in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms as of 1982, and by default all the subsequent freedoms found in the International Covenants. When the legislators drew up the Local Government Act, they did not respect your personal fundamental rights and freedoms concerning the fact that you do not have to enter into recognition as that legal person, that juridical personality.